Killer Wednesdays here, our favorite day of the week. How's it going today, guys? We have another good episode of the Million Dollar Case Study ahead of you. What are we talking about today, Kim? Today, we're going to talk about creating the perfect, unique product listing. All right, and if you haven't been following along with the Million Dollar Case Study, you're missing out on a lot because everyone's telling us it's the absolute best educational resource on the web for learning how to sell on Amazon. So we now have two products live on the Amazon.com store. We have uh, bamboo marshmallow sticks and hooded baby towels. This time Kim's launching a product. She's launching it in the UK market. She decided on sleeping bags, which we have some samples that we'll show you guys in a little bit. They have a ride, which is exciting. We're doing the whole thing totally transparently. You guys can follow along with every step along the way. We're doing webinars every single week to share our progress and teach you guys how to get to the next steps. And we're donating 100% of the profits from the products that we're selling on Amazon to Pencils of Promise and our goal is to build five schools in underprivileged countries around the world. So that being said, if you guys haven't already, please give us the thumbs up or the like or the subscribe button wherever you're, you, uh, wherever you're tuning in from. And I think we'll go ahead and get started. Are we forgetting anything? No. Let's do it. Let's it looks like this. everyone can hear us and stuff and fantastic. All right. Session number eight. So this is session number eight of part two, the European edition. We also had like 20 some odd sessions um, from part one as well. And you can find the full recap in all of those at the Jungle Scout website. If you wanna sign up for the European edition, which I recommend you do so, you can find that at junglescout.com forward slash million. And you can be, uh, you can enter your email address so you're notified about all future sessions and all our progress and everything along the way. Tell us about our giveaway. Okay, so each and every week we're doing a giveaway that you guys can get involved in. It's a great way to be involved in this project. Um, we're selecting three winners every single week. To enter, you just need to go to junglescout.com forward slash giveaway. And um, we've got different prizes for each winner, including t-shirts and some of our software. So yeah, make sure you um, enter. You'd have a good chance of um, winning, especially if um, you're watching along each and every week. Yeah, and even if you're watching a replay, it's every single week for all of 2017, so don't feel like it's too late um, if it's sometime later in this year. These are a few of our winners for this particular week. Nicole Price and James McAllister, our uh, community manager, Amelia, will be reaching out to you guys to make sure you guys get hooked up with your prizes. Um, but these are really cool. Uh, our, Nicole has a really cool, inspiring story that she shared with us. We're really happy that you're following along with it, and uh, yeah, it sounds like you're going to be very successful. And the winner of the Jungle Scout t-shirt this week is Lynn Dole. She had a funny idea for one of, for my product name, which is Jungle Sloth. Very creative. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know for sure if we're going to use that one, but it's a creative, good name nonetheless. <laughs> and where are we at with the case study? So our goal is to get to a million bucks. We're at $358,000. Keep in mind, this is all the sales from our marshmallow sticks as well as our hooded baby towels. So it's not just the hooded baby towels, it's both of those products. Yes, yeah, so we're about, we're, we've, we're past the one third mark of our goal to a million bucks. So yeah, we're well on our way. If you missed the earlier sessions, um, sessions one and two, we did our product research to find our product. Uh, session three went over kind of like product specifications. We then went on to find a supplier. We've gone over product branding and packaging requirements and suggestions. For session six, we talked about VAT in Europe. There was a lot of confusion around VAT and I think there still might be. So we put together like the ultimate guide to VAT and it's now up on our blog. So if you go to the Jungle Scout blog, you can find it. We have a really good video in there now. We have, uh, Kim did all the writing on it. She did a really good job. It's like the ultimate guide. So that should not hold back anyone from selling in the EU with this VAT, this VAT guide now. So make sure you check it out if that's something that seems intimidating to you. And we got some samples. So this is a, you know, a nice picture of um, me <laughs> in one of the sleeping bags here. We can go back and look. What Modeling are, it. Yeah, show us, okay. show us what we're working with here. So this is one of the samples. The other one pictured is uh, gonna arrive any day. So um, yeah, it's pretty nice. It's, it's thick and warm. Um, there's a few things that I don't like about it. So the fabric on the inside isn't quite soft enough for me, but I've already spoken to the supplier and they're happy to make tweaks to this. So this was like a standard sample that they sent and I'm now working with them to see you know, how we can improve this from um, 
how it looks like well, it's kind of nice because so. we, we also like we compared this to some of the other ones that we just ordered off amazon like this little flap's like kind of nice not all of them have that we noticed that yeah this zipper i'd say is like eh, six or seven out of ten like it's okay but it's not great some yeah. have like this like nose snag zipper which is nice and this thing it seems like relatively heavy duty but i think it would still break if you pulled on it yeah. what else do we find like it's got a drawstring hood, which is uh, nice. That's something that I wanted for the mummy style. Um, and this is the larger size, and it is um, a suitable size for someone who's like over six feet tall. Um, I don't know what that is in centimeters, but. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, tall. Pretty tall. So, yeah, it's a you know promising sample, and there should be another one arriving this week, too. Overall, it's nice. We don't really know what these things are for at the bottom. Maybe if you're a good camper, you can drop it in the chat box and tell us. I yeah. used to hang it or something. Yeah, maybe. Drag people around her sleeping. I don't know. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's fun to see samples. So we only, we only, Kim ordered three samples. Only one's actually arrived. I, I'm like a little bit discouraged not to remind myself not to be that like we haven't already got samples because I'm really anxious to get this thing moving along. But we're going to wait for all three samples to arrive before we choose which factory we go with. And then, yeah, we'll go ahead and put down that deposit and we can still get you know these in for Q4, like some of the holiday season, um, as long as we go ahead and place this deposit within the next week or maybe two weeks or so. So, all right. Someone asked, can we connect that to another sleeping bag? You want to talk on that real quick? Yes, so um, this isn't, usually this isn't something that can happen with a mummy style sleeping bag because the, the bottom of the bag is sort of tapered off um, so it's more snug, it kind of fits around your legs a little better. Um, there are some mummy style sleeping bags that you can zip together that I've found. Um, but most suppliers, and I kind of agree with this, say that it's not usually what you would do because the the sleeping bag isn't a rectangle shape. So it would be a pretty awkward uh, thing to sleep in as two people. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's something that I think we're gonna go with the mummy style because it's more of a higher end product for, for people who are into camping. Um, but so you're just not gonna worry about the zip together thing now? No, um, okay. but there are gonna be other, other features that are gonna make it stand out too, like for example, a better zipper than, than the sample that we've had and the, um, the flaps that go over the zipper, uh, the drawstring hood. And then I'm currently trying to work with suppliers to get the fabrics really nice and soft so it feels luxurious when you're sleeping in it. Nice. All right. Kim, what are we talking about today? Okay, so today we're going to talk about creating the perfect unique product listing. And you might be thinking, oh, isn't it a bit early for that? But it's a good time to start doing this to get ahead of the game. Um, there are There is some research involved, which I'm going to go through. Um, so we're gonna look at the anat anatomy of a product listing um, and how to create a new one from scratch. And also take a look at keyword research, uh, copywriting tips. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about how um, you could either do your photography by yourself and also how to brief a professional to get some really good photographs taken for your listing. Um, so at this point, you know, this is something I'm thinking about now because even though we're, we haven't made that deposit yet, it is still something that takes a bit of time and it's, it's good to get working on it at this point. And I think it's timely because someone just dropped in the chat box. I've been uh, working on my product listing for three weeks. I need some help. So yeah, sure. <laughs> Don't worry. We are going to, by the end of this, you will know how to set up an awesome product listing. Yeah, for sure. So the first thing to say is pretty obvious, but your product listing is your shop window. You know, we're not selling products in a brick and mortar store. The only way that people get to interact with your product before deciding to purchase it, hopefully, is, is from your product listing. So it's really, really important. And all of the things that we're going to cover today, um, this is just to get a really good product listing created, but that doesn't mean that you have to stop there. Once the product's launched, you can keep tweaking it, making it better. It's something that should be more of a, a moving feast. Um, you should always be looking to improve it. And a good listing's important. Um, you know, when, like Kim was just talking about, you know, this is where customers make their buying decisions, whether they're gonna purchase this or not, okay? So it's important for your conversion rate. Um, it's important for Amazon SEO. We need to, you know, let Amazon know what kind of product we have to make sure they're ranking it for the relevant keywords. Um, the pictures are very important. We've found that has a, a major, that's a major part of whether or not these listings convert and whether people actually buy this or not. So 
optimized listings are what you need to succeed on Amazon. The, the more optimized it is, the more sales you're gonna make, the more money you're gonna make. Um, and it's kind of like this, I guess, upward spiral, instead of downward spiral, the more uh, sales you make, the better your rank for your particular keywords. And yeah, kind of like, it's a, it's a cycle like that. So in your listing, there's um, five key elements that you need to be aware of. And actually selling on Amazon, it ca it's, it makes it pretty easy compared to running your own e-commerce store, for example, because Amazon have these, um, the product listings are already sort of optimized to work really well for you. And what you need to do is figure out what to put in those, um, in those elements of the listing. And so the top ones are the product title. And this is usually one of the first things the customer will see. Um, your product photography uh, goes without saying visuals are super important when it comes to selling your product Otherwise, they would be completely in the dark about what your product looks like and how it works and things like that um, Your product features so these are displayed as bullet points on the product listing and um, we'll see an example soon and your product description so that's more of a, a longer piece of text um, where you can give your product a narrative talk about its uses and so on and then the other part, which we're not really going to cover today, but um, a big part of it is also the reviews. You know, a customer will go to an Amazon listing and they will look at the reviews. Um, and we will cover, you know, how to get reviews in the launch process at a later date. And something to keep in mind here is this isn't like um, something that you just have to set up one time, but then once you click the go button, you can never edit it again. This can be like a constantly evolving thing. So. Um, one, even if you don't have any technical experience and you've never sold on Amazon before, don't get discouraged because it's very easy to do. I'm confident even my grandma could do it. Um, <laughs> and also though, you know, it's like, don't get too stuck. Like, wait, is my listing good enough to go ahead and hit the publish button or not? Like at, you know, once your product's in there, like it's good enough, you need to go ahead and publish it. And then just keep in mind that you can always make little changes all the time. I actually just like, you know, the jungle sticks have been up for like a year and a half or whatever now. And I actually just made a few changes last week. Cause I was like looking at some of my listings like, Oh man, I should include that in my listing. So I went back there and changed it. So yeah, don't get, you know, like too, don't let it slow you down. Like in the quest for per, uh, perfection. For sure. And each of those elements that I've just covered, like every single one of them counts. Um, I think it's important, you know, some, some sellers, it's really easy to see when you look at your competition, for example, where they have a really short description with not much in it, or their title doesn't have any keywords in it. You know, each element on your listing counts. Like don't uh, try not to um, let any of them slip because all customers are different and you know each customer might look at a different part of your listing so you need to make sure that each part of it shines um, and this is something that we kind of grade in our product uh, listing grader tool which is something you can use once you've created your listing um, but really you know to get an excellent grade for your product listing you need to have uh, really good elements on each part of your listing and better listings equals more sales um, so Splitly, uh, which is uh, one, of our, one of the tools in our toolkit for optimizing and, and testing your listings moving forwards once you've launched your product, um, they ran a, uh, we ran a case study to show the correlation between a good listing and the average conversion rates. And this was even just looking at on a basic level, like does the title have use up all of the characters? Do, are the features using up all five feature bullet points, how many words does the description have? And across the board, um, we found that the better the listing, um, the higher the conversion rate, so. Yeah, and this is cool because, you know, like, I guess the reason we did this uh, and worked with them on it is because, you know, like everyone always heard, or like, everyone's always taught, you know, for a long time, or whatever, like you need to do this or that or whatever, but we are like, which one of these things really do make a difference? That's when we ran, you know, for the uh, for those of you who know me, you know, like I'm a bit of a data nerd. So we ran this data-driven case study on, you know, like do more pictures actually increase the conversion rate? Uh, do more characters in the title um, actually increase click the ratio or sessions or conversion rate or what have you? Um, so the answer is all these things that we're gonna be talking about today are very important. And we do have the data that backs that up that we've even done ourselves. Exactly. And, and we will cover um, at a later point in this case study how to improve your product listing. But for now, like, let's get back down to basics. Um, before we start with listing optimization, we first need to create our listing. Um, this is eventually what you will launch your product with. 
Um, and as I've already said, you know, it does take a bit of time. People in the comments saying they've been trying to work on this for a few weeks. Um, so yeah, let's, let's go back to basics and show you how to create a listing. All right. Um, stand by one second. I'm going to do a quick, uh, change my screen into Amazon seller central and we're going to go in here and look, um, exactly how to kind of set this up. All right. Excellent. You guys should be able to see my seller central now. All right. So once you're, once you've signed up for a seller central account and you're inside of seller central, um, let's see, you go into, uh, the catalog here and add a product. And once you do that, you'll see this page right here. All right. And we're going to go down here to create a new product listing. All right. Now what it's going to make you do is select which main category um, you want your product to be in. Okay. So on the amazon.com store, there used to be a search. I don't know if there still is or not. Um, on the UK store, it doesn't look like there is, but that's, um, it's no big deal. We can of course find this. Um, so what I did, I just went and looked at some of our competitors. Okay. So this is just like one of our competitors and we can go through and look at a few of them. Um, but what I'm looking at is to see which, uh, like child category they're in. So this one's in mummy sleeping bags. I, and I could go through and look at a few of these, which I did. Um, but it turns out like the most relevant category for our particular product is going to be this one. So it's in like sports and outdoors, then camping, hiking and mountaineering, sleeping gear, sleeping bags, and mummy sleeping bags. Um, a few years ago on, or like really like a, mm, probably two years ago on Amazon, you could be in multiple subcategories like this. You used to be able to like email seller support and they would put you in other subcategories. They no longer do that. You have to just choose one and you choose it during the signup process here. I think they will change it if you decide that you want to be in a different one, but they won't let you be in multiple subcategories. So it's, I'm confident that one of the things Amazon takes into account in their ranking algorithm is which of these subcategories you're in. So you're going to want it to just be as relevant as possible. If you look at like some old content from people, you might see people who try to like hack it and get in like a smaller subcategory. So it's more likely they can be like the top seller in that particular subcategory. But I wouldn't recommend that for you guys. I would just recommend because, you know, like if you choose a smaller one and it's not very relevant for your product anymore, you're probably not really getting ranked for the keywords that you want because Amazon thinks it's not that relevant. So just choose whatever is most relevant. So we'd go in here, we click on sports and outdoors. And then what do we say the next one was camping and hiking and then sleeping gear. So I do camping and hiking, uh, sleeping gear. What do we say the next sleeping, mommy look. Bags. sleeping gear and sleeping bags and yeah. mommy bags. All right. Mommy sleeping bags. All right. So we're going to select that. All right. Now we're on this page and we need to enter some information. Okay. And, um, you don't have to enter all this information right now. There's only a few key fields. One of the things that is important right now is, you know, like probably in a week or two, we're going to need to submit our packaging design to our suppliers, at which point we need to have the FNSQ barcode to put on our packaging. So that's why even if, you're not ready to create the listing right now, you still need to go through this process that I'm showing right now so you can at least get that FN SKU barcode to put on your packaging, okay? Um, the product ID, we talked about this, what was this two weeks ago? Yeah. We talked about this a little bit more two weeks ago, so um, if you wanna kinda know all the details, you can do that, but essentially we purchased um, some barcodes from a third party a site, like Speedy Barcodes, um, uh, this is where we purchase our EAN number. You can go back and watch during the episode, but technically against Amazon for to fully comply with Amazon's terms of service, this is supposed to be purchased directly from GS one. 
we decided, you know, even though everything else we totally do is by the book, we decided for this that um, we chose not to do that for now to for the cost savings. And then we're technically going to be breaking the rules, even though it seems like they don't really mind for the next few months until our brand registry is done. OK. Um, OK, so the things that we have to fill in right now is the, the title, the manufacturer, the brand name. Uh, we don't even have to fill this out right now. Um, yes, yeah, so that these are actually the only four things that we have to fill out to get get the FN SKU. But throughout today's webinar, we're gonna be talking a little bit more about filling in these, uh, um, yeah, other fields as well. So, what do you think, Kim? Should we go ahead and just do like a something simple right here, right now, and then we can go back and change it? Yeah. After for we sure. talk more about later on the webinar, okay. So we'll just do, what would be your main keyword? Mummy sleeping bags? Yeah, that would be a super specific one that All right. I want to rank for. Now, under our brand name, this is important. This needs to be, remember, uh, so again, we talked about this a little bit more a few weeks ago. If you want to get brand registry, which is not required by any means, but it is nice, you do get benefits from it. So we do plan on getting brand registry for this product. We have to think about, do we want a trademark? A trademark's required for brand registry. So we'll, then we need to think about, do we want a trademark um, something very specific like uh, Jungle Slumber, which I think might maybe our brand name? Or do we wanna trademark something more generic, which other um, kind of products could fit into better? So the, the advantages to do something very specific like Jungle Slumber would be you get like the legal protection that comes along to make sure that other people aren't using like the, uh, the brand name Jungle Slumber, which can be confusing to customers. Um, we're not too worried about that since that's just a, pr a private label product. So we've chosen to brand, to trademark something more generic like Jungle Creations. We're gonna trademark that and that's gonna be like our overarching brand. And then you can think of jungle slumber or jungle sloth or whatever else as kind of like a model underneath the brand jungle creations. So um, this is what I'd probably recommend for both for most of you guys, but you can kind of decide. And then manufacturer actually doesn't uh, really matter, but we'll go ahead and just put in jungle creations. All right, um, so we have all that stuff in. Um, you can come back and do variations later. If you don't want to put the price and stuff right now, you can just click select this box so they let you skip it. And then same thing, we don't have any images of it yet, so we're gonna come back and do that more later. So at this point, I can just hit save and finish. And then this listing has been created, it's been put into Amazon system. And then we're able to um, get our FN SKU, which we'll show you how to do in here. Quickly resize this. All right. So after you've created that, I, I was going to do that live, but then I said, then I realized that sometimes it takes like five minutes uh, to kind of like populate through uh, Amazon system. So instead, I didn't click the button, and we just did screenshots here instead. After you've set up that listing after I hit that save and finish button there. It takes a few minutes for it to show up in your Amazon Seller Central account. But then what you do is you select the inventory drop down. you go to manage inventory, you find the particular product. So ours would be the, the mummy sleeping bags that we just did. Um, the drop downs over on the right hand side, you click that drop down, you go to convert to fulfilled by Amazon, at which point I think it says like, uh, do you want to convert this or do you want to convert and ship these products and it doesn't matter you can actually click either one but i just clicked convert um then i went back to the same managed inventory page i selected that drop down again and i went to print item labels at which point it will give you a pdf where the um it has one or i think you can select to put a whole bunch but you essentially only need one so we need to get this barcode from that pdf and this is our FN SKU barcode, and this is what we're gonna be putting on our packaging, okay? So when they all come out, they have uh, the barcode, like in the black, and then below it, they have some text. So ours says, mummy sleeping bag with hood, long and more, whatever. Um, you don't need that text below it to put on your packaging. The only thing you need, to, I see, sometimes I order things from private label sellers, and I see they have that text below it. You don't need it, you just need the barcode, and 
I don't even think it's required, but I think it is best practice to put the, the alphanumeric, uh, you know, R says like X000 R3. It's best to put that below it as well. All right. So that should be everything you need to know as far as the basics of setting it up and then to get your FN SKU. Now, as far as making it a good listing, there's a little bit more uh, entail there. Yep. So for me, the best place to start is with the keyword research because you you want to know um, what people are searching for to find your product or products like yours. Um, and this is really going to influence actually what goes into your product listing. Um, it's a really good time to do even more competitor research and find out what they are ranking for and what they're making sales from because obviously you're competing directly with these with these people so you need to make sure that you rank better hopefully um, eventually for the same or similar keywords as your comp competitors um, you may also find opportunities that you didn't think of before you'd be surprised at what people actually search for on the internet when it comes to finding something and what I search for for sleeping bag may be totally different to somebody from a different part of the UK or if I was going to sell the sleeping bag in the US then they would probably have different words for a sleeping bag too so it's really useful to do this for that and then also obviously you want to get your product listing to rank well um, in the Amazon search results and also in other in other search engines too like Google um, so this is why keyword research is so important at this stage. And um, just a little bit, I don't want to go into any uh, detail about this, but just an overview of how Amazon determines keyword relevancy. So they have this um, search algorithm, it's called uh, Amazon A9. And this is, it's really important for Amazon's business model because it effectively seeks out to find the most relevant product and then show that to the customer. And this increases sales. So this is really important to Amazon. And there's lots of different things that go into this algorithm. So it's not just your keywords in the product listing. Um, it's the degree of text match. So that, that does fall into the keywords. Um, it could be the price of your product, the availability, if it's in stock or not, your sales history, reviews. So there's lots of different things that go into this algorithm. Um, but in, in a nutshell, um, with your product listing, you really want to make it easy for Amazon to understand what it is you're selling. So here are a few of the tools of the trade for doing your keyword research. There's not really enough time to show you each of them. and Unfortunately, the bad news is there isn't really an accurate free tool these days. Um, the best one that I use is Google Keyword Planner, and it is a free tool, but unless you are running paid um, ads with Google, then the, the data that they give you is more limited. However, I would still advise to use this because it gives you a good starting point and a good general idea of how um, how popular all of the keywords are that you're interested in, especially when you compare them alongside each other. Um, and we'll take a look at some of my keyword research in a minute as an example of that. Um, there's a few others on there. So um, Ahrefs, uh, Moz and KeywordTool.io, they're all paid tools to access the, the keyword explorers. Um, and all of these tools generally you can filter by um, country, KeywordTool.io also has a, uh, you can filter by Amazon or Google, so you can find out what keywords are more popular on different platforms as well. Um, so my advice would be to use Google Keyword Planner, and if you did want to invest in another tool, then you can do, and then you can um, sort of cross-reference it. Um, there's a few other tools which are good for generating other ideas, so LSI Graph and Ubersuggest. So this is where I may put in something like mummy sleeping bag and it will spit out a whole bunch of other ideas related to that keyword. So that's a really easy way to find new ideas that you may not have already thought of. Um, the links for all of these tools are going to be in the homework sheet at the end, so don't worry about taking down the names. And the one last place that you can um, come up with good product ideas is if you guys notice the new update for the Jungle Scout extension, when you're on any page, you can run um, the Jungle Scout Pro extension. And down here in the bottom right is a word cloud. So what I can do is I can click that word cloud 
And these are all of the words that they've found in the titles of um, the products. So you can make a search, then you can pull this up. You can think this is a good way to, you know, this doesn't give you search volume, but it does give you a good idea of what other keywords um, your competitors are using and shows you which ones of them are most popular. And you can also, if you just click this little button down right here, it downloads an Excel file and then that will let you um, use all those. So you can do a few different, you know, like for ours, we would probably do like mummy sleeping bag, um, camping, sleeping bag, whatever. You can do a few of those and you can find a few different keywords, but it shows you how popular like each one is, you know, like uh, sleeping is the most popular word then camping or I guess bag, then sleeping, then camping, etc. So here's an example of some of the keyword research that I have started to do for um, the topic here is like general uh, sleeping bag uh, keywords. Um, I may have different topics. For example, I may do a whole bunch of keyword research about camping equipment, which is a broader keyword, but it's still kind of relevant to my to my product. Um, so here you can see how I've, I've entered the average monthly search volume. I've taken this straight from Google's Keyword Planner. The difficulty is also from Google Keyword Planner. And then I've added the clicks. So this is, these are all ballpark guys. Like you can kind of take this with a pinch of salt, but at the same time, as you can see here, when you put it all together, you can start to see which, um, which keywords are more popular in comparison to other ones that are related to your product. So that's where it comes in really handy is you get this comparison so you can figure out which your top keywords are going to be. Um, yeah, because I guess like at the end of the day, you know, when you're doing your setting up your product listing, you know, we've already chosen this sleeping bag product. So it doesn't really matter how many searches these products really get on Amazon at this point. We've already verified dem demand by people actually purchasing them. But we do want to know what is most likely for our customers to search through. So that's when just the, um, yeah, kind of relevancy of, or the, yeah, the, the keywords is important. Another thing that I like to do, so if you have the web app, you can also do some keyword research using the Niche Hunter. So you can um, enter a keyword into the Niche Hunter and hit search, um, and you'll get a whole bunch of um, products listed there, similar to the extension. And this is a really good way to find keyword ideas in those results. Um, alongside that, you can see how those products are doing. And this is um, also a good way to start doing your competitor keyword research. So from this list, I may see, you know, um, a sleeping bag on there that's going to be one of my competitors and then I'll go forward and click onto their listing and then I can browse their listing and take a look at what keywords are in their product titles, in their descriptions and so on. Um, and I can start to build a bank of those keywords that I know that my competitors are using as well. And in the Niche Hunter, it does work for all of the EU and all of North America. So it doesn't matter where you're doing this from, you can select the relevant marketplace and um, do your research right there. So here's some sort of top tips for uh, Amazon keyword research. So always keep a record of it and I'm gonna give you a template for this in the homework spreadsheet uh, later. So this is, you will need your research again later. There's no doubt about it. You're gonna be improving your listing. You're gonna be probably um, starting up with some Amazon PPC campaigns. Your keyword research always comes in useful. So it's worthwhile spending the time and making a document of it. And you can keep adding to that and um, updating it as time moves on too. Use a mixture of tools if you can. Like I say, um, some of them are paid for, but the more tools you can use, the better idea you will get. Um, they will all give you different results in terms of average monthly search volumes. So the more you can use, you can get a better general idea. Um, pick out what you think are going to be your most influential keywords as you go along. You can highlight them or make notes. Relevancy tests. So this is one of the easiest like SEO things you can do. So when in doubt, just do a search in Amazon. So if I'm thinking, well, if I, you know, camping equipment, that's quite broad. What actually comes up in Amazon when I search for it? If no sleeping bags come up, then that's definitely not going to be one of my main keywords. Um, so that's just a really super simple test you can do to check whether a keyword is relevant to you or not. And then finally, um, use your competitors as a starting point. So it's really important that you figure out what keywords they're using and what they're ranking for um, because you effectively want to compete with this. 
Okay, so once you have done your keyword research, you've got that spreadsheet there, you can go back to that whenever, you, whenever you're ready. Um, the next thing you're gonna need to do is actually write your product listing. And um, so I'm just gonna go over some copywriting tips for writing a really good product listing. So in your product title, um, you need to put your top keyword or keywords in there. Um, that's kind of a given. Whether you put your brand name in there or not, there's, there's a lot of sort of debate about that. Some people do, some people don't. It's something you could test later on down the line. Um, but make sure at the very least that your top keywords are in there and try and um, you know make it really human friendly. So although you wanna put those keywords in there, you don't want it to read really weird to a human or to a customer that's trying to buy your product. I'll just add in there that I actually am a believer that putting your, a lot of people like to start with their brand name at the beginning of the title. I actually don't personally like doing that, but like Kim said, there's like two different schools of thought there. And also, um, I'm a believer that your most important keywords should be earlier on in your title. It seems like um, Amazon weighs like those first few, maybe three, four or five keywords a little bit heavier in your title than the ones like more towards the end. So it's another thing to keep in mind. For sure, that's a good tip. And you can see there in the Jungle Sticks example um, to the right, you know, there's a lot of keywords in there, but I can still read it as a human and understand it. It kind of almost reads like a story, you know, it's bamboo marshmallow, roasting sticks, 36 inch, um, thick, extra long, heavy duty wooden skewers. There's commas in there to break it up. So even, even though there's a lot of keywords in there, I can still read it and understand it and take the most important information away from that as a customer. Um, and in the future, you know, you can test your title for better optimization. Um, but right now, just try and include your main keywords and get a really nice title ready for launch. In your product features, so these are the bullet points. You can see an example to the right there as well. Um, that's for the jungle uh, snooks, I believe, yep. Um, so the main thing here is to use all five bullet points. You get five fields in the back end of Seller Central, use them, use them all. Um, although they're called product features, that's what Amazon calls this section, you should really think about it as product benefits because actually what you need to convey in those fields are the benefits of this product to the customer. So although, yeah, you may include a few features as well, always lead with the benefits first because that's what's going to ultimately help you make sales. Um, you can also in include things like guarantees, convey the quality, um, how will this product solve a problem or you know, how will the customer feel when they own this product? Try and think about it from the customer's shoes. Um, include more than one keyword. You've got a lot more um, space here to include even more keywords that you found, maybe some um, related keywords that aren't quite your, you know, your core main keywords. Um, and in the future, you can sort of test like long form versus short form, um, but that's something we'll look at in the future. And so next is your product description. So um, this is, I find that this is, I don't know if you agree, Greg, this is what a lot of sellers, third party sellers neglect. They'll sort of write a few sentences, doesn't look great. Um, you know, some customers will read this every single word. Some customers won't even look at it. But the point is some will. So you need to spend some time on it. And it's a great way also just including more keywords, right? Yeah. Like you only have so many spaces in the title and the bullet points. And a common question we get is, is the product description still indexed if you use like enhanced brand content? And the answer to that is yes. So even if you're using enhanced brand content, you still need to fall, fill out the product description fields to make sure you're being indexed for those keywords. Yeah. Um, this is a really great opportunity to actually tell a bit of a story about your product and give it a narrative, add a bit of personality. You can really make yourself shine, um, stand out from the competition. Um, you can include, again, some of your main keywords and some of those tertiary keywords. Um, use descriptive language. And another thing which I find um, really helps is to use HTML to create headings, bold, italic, and bullet points in your description. Um, there's a link on the screen there, which is also in the homework sheet. That's a really like easy to understand cheat sheet of how to basically make text bold or add a list, um, which you can use in your descriptions. And on the next slide, there's an example of what this looks like. Yeah, and this is very easy to do, guys. Don't like uh, get scared. Like, wait, I don't know how to write HTML. I'm not a coder. It's like it's very simple to do, and the cheat sheet kind of shows you that. Um, 
something I guess I should add is I think technically Amazon says like you're not supposed to do yeah. HTML in the description, but everyone does it and they don't care. And it seems like if they did care, like they could easily just automatically strip that out. So yeah, again, this might like I think this is perfectly fine. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is an example. Every, every single seller does it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's, it's, I, I mean. And it makes it look nicer, the listings, Yeah, right? it makes no sense that Amazon don't want it. I know, because it's it crazy. it makes the customer more likely to buy. Normally, that's what Amazon wants, right? right? So, this is an example from Jungle Snugs. You can see we've got the, we've got like a list with some bullet points. We've made each, we've separated the text with headings. So, when people read online, they tend to skim through it. You know, they're scrolling, they're skimming, they're looking for things that they are interested in. So by adding like bold headings like this, they might zone in on, oh, it's perfect as a gift, I'm looking for a gift. So it's just a really nice way to make your description stand out um, when you're not using enhanced brand content. Um, and Greg already mentioned that, we're not really covering that today because it is something that you now need brand registry to do. So we'll probably cover you know, how to set up your enhanced brand content at a later date once we're in the brand registry. Um, but even if you know, even if you are going to use enhanced brand content, you still need to fill out your your product description in the regular way to make sure that Amazon can see all of those keywords in those fields in the back end of Seller Central. And so going back to your keyword research, um, there's also some fields in the back end of Seller Central where you can add your keywords. Um, this has actually changed fairly recently. It used to be, I think it was 5,000 characters was allowed on each line, whereas now it's only 250 characters um, per field. So you can see on the generic keywords there at the bottom, this is a Jungle Sticks example, um, you've got 250 characters on each of those lines. So you kind of need to be a little bit more specific about what keywords you're choosing to put in there. You don't need to put any punctuation, you can just separate with spaces. Um, because you've got less characters, you could maybe leave things out like singular and pluralized words. Amazon's algorithms can pick up on this, so you know you don't need to add an S and then um, put the word as a, as a singular form as well. Um, there's no need to repeat keywords. So in the past, because we had so many characters to play with, a lot of sellers would repeat their keywords. Whereas right. now... This is actually a bad example because this was like with the old way. Yeah. We need to go back and redo this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the main things here are like, so like truth be told, like it's some sellers like when this happened was like, oh gosh, another way Amazon's trying to screw us, blah, 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 all the people like the doomsday people. But the truth is like all your main keywords should be on your listing anyway. So this is just like one more spot that you could like add a few that like maybe you couldn't get. Uh, it's like flow well, like in the description or, you know, title or bullet points. But like, like I said, there shouldn't be too many keywords left that you couldn't squeeze in there. And this would be the, the place to put them. Uh, probably the reason Amazon actually reduced this character limit is because people were putting lots of irrelevant keywords in these fields, which actually makes it really difficult for Amazon to understand what your listing is about. You know, at the end of the day, Amazon wants to look at your listing and all of the keywords on the listing and also in the back end and say, well, I know that's a mummy sleeping bag and it's three season and it's great for camping. You know, they, their algorithms need to know that information so that they can provide the best uh, results for customers. So here's just a few like common mistakes that people make when it comes to sort of keyword research, creating your listing. Um, don't include your competitor's brand name in your listing. It might be tempting, but it's it's bad for the customer experience. It's it's generally frowned upon. Like it's against, I presume, Amazon's terms of service. Yeah. Well, this is. I think they even specifically say that in their terms of service. But it's also can be uh, like IP infringement. Like if yeah. you're using a trademark name in your listing, um, if the company cares and they report to Amazon, Amazon will actually suspend your listing for using like a trademark term uh, due to IP infringement yeah. and then yeah you have to go back and forth them it's a huge hassle and stuff so definitely just don't do it and actually that goes for um, you need to be mindful and careful about like any words you use like some people I think probably don't realize that some words are um, trademarked so example if I was selling uh, like tissues to blow my nose I might think like oh a typical name for those is Kleenex but like Kleenex is a trademark term or like if you're selling um, little plastic blocks as toys, some people might say like, oh, they're Legos. And it's like, well, Legos is a trademark term. So again, you need to be careful not to use those because those companies um, likely will try to, you know, or 
it's very easy for those companies to report to Amazon, show them that they own the trademark, and then Amazon will suspend your listing until you take it down. For sure. Um, the next point is don't stuff with irrelevant keywords. So I've already touched on this, but and now you, you know you have less space to do this. But I may put uh, camping equipment as a relevant keyword, maybe in my description, maybe in the back end. But I'm not going to put something like camping stove because I'm not selling a camping stove. So you just need to make sure you're not providing totally redundant information and keywords in your listing or in the back end of Seller Central. Um, We've already covered this, but don't use commas or punctuation in the keywords section. It's not required. It's just going to use up your character limit. Um, and just generally, don't be misleading. Keep it genuine. You know, it's it's all about your brand. You've got to create a really good brand image for yourself. So just try to be as genuine and as and as relevant as possible. So I'm just going to cover a little bit about product photography now because I mentioned earlier that this is a really important part of your listing and um, you know they say pictures tell a thousand words and this is in e-commerce um, it's so true like you really need great photography to help sell your product so there's kind of two ways you can approach this you can take a DIY approach um, if you're trying to make cost savings and take your own photos um, the downside to this is you know unless you're a professional product photographer um, you're probably going to end up with lower quality images. Um, I'm actually a photographer myself, but product photography is something that I've never done extensively. And you know, even for me, I would still I would still consider hiring a professional to get um, most or all of my images taken. So, you know, product photography is is a niche that there are professionals out there that can do it really well. It's just more expensive, um, but you get a higher quality outcome and. Um, at the end of the day, you can use those images for years to come. So it is an investment. It's an upfront investment, but it's definitely worth thinking about. Someone in the chat box is asking how much the uh, it costs for photography. Um, for a professional, I'd say probably on the low end, and this would just be for product images. This wouldn't be lifestyle photography. I'd say on the low end would be like 100 bucks. On the higher end would be $200, $300. And that would be for like a set of like, eight or 10 images that you can use um, like for your particular listing. What I mean by lifestyle images would be like people using the product uh, kind of, so like for our sleeping bag, that would be like if we um, maybe like set up like a little pretend like campsite and there was someone sleeping in our bag and like stuff like that. The prices for those vary greatly because you can imagine it, right? Like if they have to hire like two models and set up like a little campsite out in the woods, that's like a like a kind of like a decent little production they have going on, you know? So something like that um, would be quite a bit more expensive. I think probably what most people do here is they get professional photos taken. If they have the budget to spend, they get professional photo like uh, product images taken. And then I do see like quite a few of like DIY uh, lifestyle images on Amazon because um, a lot of that, it, it's harder to find a photographer to do those and that stuff's out of a lot of people's budget. So speaking of DIY product photography, um, so one thing that you will definitely need for your listing is your main product image, which needs to be the product on a completely white background. Um, and it's a square crop. And um, here's just a few images of me doing this using an iPhone and a few like household things like a lamp and a, a white sheet. So it's definitely possible, you know, if, if you're either in a rush, you need to get your listing out there, or if you're trying to save on costs, it's actually, you know, it's relatively easy to follow along in the same process I did and create a decent um, main image. Um, this is also a really good way to create more main images that you can test later on down the line to see if they improve conversions. Um, so again, the link's going to be in, in the homework too, but there's a, there's a guide on our blog that shows you exactly how you can do this using some very basic equipment. Yeah, like just an iPhone and like a le few light shows sitting around the house, right? Yeah, for yeah, sure. You did a nice job with that. That's a really good resource. And then, um, so if you were going to um, either do it yourself or hire someone, you need to sort of bear in mind Amazon's product photography requirements. Um, so you need at least, as I've said, one product image on a completely white background. You can have up to eight other images. Um, I would advise that you use them all. So try and get a nice set of images that show the product in different ways, in use. Um, you can also do sort of 
infographics where you show um, like the size of the product or something like that or you can add I don't know um, any certificates that it may have in your other images um, so yeah I would advise that you use them all um, and images must be at least 1000 pixels in width or height um, again if you can go bigger then that's better too because when you zoom in on a photo on Amazon it shows it in very detailed quality so the the higher quality of the image the better I think they do have like a size requirement. I think it's like, if I remember off the top of my head, I think it's like three and a half megabytes, but I try to make them as big as possible, yeah. especially if you get them from a pro, these will be very large images and go ahead and just upload like as large of image as you can. So make sure they have like the zoom feature and the photos still look nice when you're zooming in on them. Yeah. And then some nice to haves, um, which we've already kind of touched on in order to stand out from the competition would be some lifestyle images maybe with models, maybe just showing the product in use. Sometimes it's a hand model, sometimes it's um, a full person. Um, and yeah, a range of different um, images showing different angles, uh, maybe include the packaging and things like that. So there's lots of different things that you can do. You can get creative with your product images. And it's kind of up to you whether you want to do it DIY. Maybe if you've got a decent DSLR and you're, you know, you're pretty good at photography, you could try and do some of your own lifestyle photos at least to begin with, if you're not ready to hire a professional yet. Um, so each everybody's different, um, but it's just figuring out what the best uh, best way is to proceed for you. Um, also in the homework, I've included a product photography brief template. So it's pretty big, but if you are going to hire a photographer, it's worth writing down in, in minute detail all of the images that you need exactly to the specifications that you need. Um, and even give them like visuals to guide them on what it is you want. If you're going to spend this money and invest in it, you want to get the best possible outcome. So I've kind of just put together a little sheet where you can put the sort of the main overview of the brief and number of photographs required. And then on the right, there's sort of a breakdown of like each individual image where you would say, you know, it's this type of image. Um, here's what it needs to look like. Uh, you can give all the specifications like size, um, cropping it into a square for Amazon and things like that. So if you are going to hire someone, then you can use this template to help you get started. It's a really good template as well if you need a quote. Um, if you gave a photographer something as detailed as this, they'd likely be able to give you a really good quote on how much it would cost. So it's homework time. <laughs> Teacher Kim, give them their homework. <laughs> So your homework for this week is to create a listing on Amazon. As Greg said, you're going to need to do that to get your FN SKU um, to put on your packaging in you know a week or two's time. Do some keyword research. So at this point, hopefully, you know what your product is. You can start to do your keyword research and competitor keyword research and fill out the template. Um, the link is at the bottom of the screen there. And then using your research, start drafting out your product titles, features, and descriptions. You can do this straight into Seller Central, or if you prefer to you know, do it in a Word document so you can play around with it first, do that. I prefer to do it that way because then I can keep, um, keep, a, keep it on file, like my progress, how I'm, how I'm doing. Um, and yeah, so for bonus points, if you're at this point yet, um, maybe spec out a product photography brief if you are going to hire someone. Um, because when the final samples are available, you'll be able to start getting some photographs taken. Are you going to grade their homework when they're done? Yep, I expect you all to get <laughs> solid A's. A's. Yeah. A's. If you haven't already registered, you're crazy not to do so. <laughs> Junglescout.com forward slash million will make sure that will make sure that you always get updated about the new sessions we have coming up. Um, sometimes we send out like midweek updates because something can't wait till the next Wednesday for our next live webinar. Next Wednesday, we're bringing on some guests who are experts in the freight forwarding field so we can learn everything that we need to know for getting this product shipped from China um, to the UK. So I know that's an area that people have a lot of questions. So we're bringing on people much smarter than Kim and I to help us with that. So I encourage you to make sure you join for that. It looks like we've finished three or four minutes early. So if you guys want to drop a few questions in the chat box, um, we'll see what we can do to try to help with those. One person had the question, do you know how I can tweak my product title without it getting in the way of the ASIN? It says it's too similar yet it's my own ASIN. Um, okay, so this is like a little bit of a tricky thing. You're supposed to always, like, if you create the listing, you should be able to edit it. 
However, from time to time, Amazon takes away like listing control from you. Generally though, if you email seller support and say like, hey, like I'm the manufacturer of this product, I create this listing, these are the edits that I'm trying to make, they generally get that back to you. But Amazon has kind of this strange system and they don't make it clear to us everything that's involved with it. But essentially like, you know, like Amazon owns the listings and they don't want like other people making adjustments to listings when they're not supposed to. So. Uh, yeah, the quick answer there is just email seller support and they should be able to hook you up. Um, I've sent the general, the jungle scout contract to a few suppliers now and I've had a lot of problems with it. Suppliers don't want to seem to sign it. Any ideas? I would ask them what problems they have with the contract because, uh, this is pretty standard. I've sent this to dozens and dozens of suppliers. They never seem to have a problem with it. Maybe there's one specific thing in there that they don't like. Uh, and you guys can work on. So I'd probably just say like, what what specific issue do you have with it? And we can try to adjust it accordingly. Um, character guide says I should have a 50 character limit to my title. Do you guys follow these character guides? No, I put in as many, <laughs> I put in as many characters as I can in the title. Something like, I saw like a few comments like while Kim was talking, like I emailed seller support else and they said this. And let me just tell you guys something like, Emailing Amazon should be like the best or like uh, the best source to get like good answers. But unfortunately, I think their seller support, you know, department is just like so huge. It's probably thousands, if not ten, like maybe even tens of thousands of people. And it seems like most of them aren't very trained on all these small nuances. So take anything seller support tells you with a grain of salt. Like I think I saw someone in a Facebook group post a screenshot last week that like it was like it was something really sketchy like it was okay if their friends and family like purchased their product and left a review as long as unbiased or something like people from like seller support was telling them this and it's like i wouldn't do that <laughs> that's definitely uh, against the rules so you kind of like you kind of have to balance like what you learn from like the million dollar case study like with sell what seller supports telling you and yeah so that's kind of like my warning there um all right sorry we have a lot of questions coming in now All right, this is a good question. All right, how should I handle a catch-22 where I want to order a thousand units of oversize, but the storage limits 500 units to new sellers? I would see if your freight forwarder could store 500 of those units for you. Um, if not, you could try to store them at your house or you could do two separate shipments, ask the factory to store 500 for like a month. All those, all those things should work. And then within like four to six weeks of your first sale, you should be able to increase that. Um, so generally Amazon lets you double your storage limit every six weeks as long as you've sold, I think at least 8% of your inventory on a weekly basis. So that shouldn't be that hard to do with 500 units. So yeah, that should, um, you should be able to get that increased pretty quickly, but I agree that is a pain in the butt like right when you have a brand new account. All right, can I add videos to my listing? If you go through the new brand registry process, which again, you have to have a trademark to do, then there is a way to upload videos. I, I think it's still in beta. I don't think it's available to everyone right now, but it is um, available to most sellers and it will be available to all sellers through the brand registry program soon. Let's see if we try to do one more. Um, what is the least amount, this is a good question. What's the least amount of inventory you would start with with a new product? If you have the capital to do so, I would recommend ordering three months of inventory, of estimated inventory. So of course you can use Jungle Scout to try to gauge um, demand for your particular product. So, and estimate, you know, okay, it's like, it seems like if I rank, you know, on the first half of this front page, I should be selling like 300 units a month, in which case I would try to order 900 units. And the reason that I say that is, remember it takes about a month in, in general, it takes about a month for an item to go through the production line. So like the day you put down a deposit with the factory, it takes about a month for it to finish. If you ship by ocean, that takes another month. So that's two months from when you place the order with the factory until it arrives at Amazon. So if you order three months worth of inventory, you actually only have like a month worth of sales until you have to reorder again. So that's why we try to order a minimum of three months if you don't have the starting capital to get started with that, the most important thing is just getting going. So don't let that deter you if you can only afford like two months or six weeks or whatever else. 
you know, there's always a way you can figure out how to get units quicker or, you know, you're out of stock for a little while. It's not the end of the world. Um, with that being said, guys, we're at an hour here. We try to keep all of the webinars at an hour. So we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. If you haven't already done so, please make sure to hit the subscribe button button below. If you're tuning in live right now on one of the channels that we're streaming through, please give us the thumbs up. That's what gets Kim and I excited to come back every week and do this again. And don't forget to do your homework. Yep. Do the homework, guys. Bye. See you later. Bye.